Today on the Continuing Adventures of 286 computers that I own, this is an IBM PS2 Model 50. This is one of the most frustrating machines that I own. And I'll be getting to why it's so frustrating to me in a bit. But anyway, this machine has kind of an interesting story to me of how I got it. I was at Best Buy because, uh huh, it's Best Buy. I like walking around there and looking at stuff and not buying anything. And I saw this dude talking to the Geek Squad, and he had this machine up there talking to them about it for some reason. I think he was asking them if it worked and if they could help him see if it worked and what it can do. Um, I remember the Geek Squad connecting it to a monitor, seeing it turn on through a few other codes, have no idea what any of them meant, give the guy, back, give the, guy the machine back and be like, well, it turns on, that's all we can tell you. So... I got talking to him, and he said he found, I uh, had a friend who had a lot of these machines, and he was going to buy one, and actually buy a bunch, and try to flip them or do something with them. So anyway, I think at the end of the day, I gave him about 100 bucks for this, and to get home, and well, it works, but there are some things that don't work with it, and there are some things that are kind of frustrating about this, and well, let's just dig right in and get to that. Like I said, this is an IBM PS2 Model 50. This is a 286 machine. I don't remember exactly how fast the CPU for it is. And right here is the pretty satisfying power switch. Um, this is the floppy drive. As you can see, it's not the original floppy drive. Um, when, I, when I open this machine up, I will explain why that is. So let's go around to the back. Around back, we have three expansion slots. This being an IBM PS2, and IBM being all proprietary and stuff, these are not like PCI or ISA or anything like that. These are, I think, called MCA slots for micro channel architecture something that pretty much only IBM used and then well no one used um, we have two PS2 ports this being a PS2 so PS2 keyboard PS2 mouse a parallel port a serial port and a VGA port with the same missing pin as our compact laptop so I'm going to be trying to use the same little adapter thing that I had before. And this one I know works. I've used this with this adapter before. So that's why I know this adapter works and this VGA port does work. And luckily the power cable uses a normal standard PC power cable. Open this up. There are two screws. Unscrew those. And the case will just slide off. Yep, the screws stay in the case, and this just slides off. Here we have the inside of our machine. Here you can see our hard drive. It says Type 30, and it is 20 megabytes. Um, so I was saying this machine is my most frustrating, and this is why. When I got this machine, the hard drive didn't seem to want to work. And I actually have went online to eBay and a few other places and tried to get replacements for these. And every hard drive I've tried in this machine has given me the same error. I can show you the error, possibly. If not, I'll just explain it. But basically, the hard drive has some bad sectors on it, or the system claims the hard drive has bad sectors on it, so I can't format it and I can't install DOS to it, so I just can't do anything with it. I even tried replacing the hard drive controller, which is here. I have another one of these, slightly different one, and replacing it doesn't seem to want to do anything. I still get the same error. Um, so the hard drive is an MFM hard drive. I don't think there was necessarily proprietary type of hard drive, but pretty sure this connector on this drive is proprietary, so these were only for IBM, 
you can get a SCSI card for it, and I might do that. Might see if I can get a SCSI card for it, because you can get SCSI hard drives, I think, much easier than I can get one of these. And I've tried a couple of these, and they all don't work. So, unless every hard drive I have doesn't work, or the controller card doesn't work, or the other controller doesn't work, or something doesn't work. I don't know, there's something about it. That's what's been super frustrating about this. So I might try to get a SCSI card, and then maybe, like, get, like, a SCSI SD adapter and try that out, but... Anyway. So... The one MCA card I have in this machine is a 3COM Ethernet card. Um, uh, I think once I have DOS installed on the hard drive, if I can ever get that to happen, then I can install drivers for it in DOS. Though, I do have the file set up for it so that way the reference disk can see it. So the system, or the BIOS system, does know this card exists, but I don't have any software or drivers in DOS to actually make it do anything. So like I said, this machine is a 286. And I have installed my own 287 right here. Looking at the chip, it says 80286-10. So maybe this is a 10 megahertz TPU. And I paired it with a 287 that also says dash 10 on it. So maybe they're both 10 megahertz. Flipping it around to the front. We have two floppy drive ports. And... So the floppy drive that came with this um, didn't seem to want to read disks. Um, when you put a disk in, it would get stuck, and you had to like wiggle the button to get it out. And it just the floppy drive didn't work, so I had to get another one. And so while searching on eBay, I found a floppy drive for pretty cheap. But when I got it, I didn't realize it was for a IEM PS two fifty Z and not a fifty. So this floppy drive is for actually from a PS two fifty Z, and well. It's not quite the same. The plastic face paint that should have been on the front doesn't fit over this drive correctly because it's not the same type of drive. The little drive sled that, as you can see on this, is screwed to the bottom of the drive. This has that as well. But the one fit a 50Z and the 50 aren't quite the same. So, the hack job I did here was basically to unscrew the drive, plug in the connector and then sort of duct tape the PCB onto the drive and also I duct tape the drive to the sled it looks kind of janky but it does work I don't know why it works but it does this is a 1.44 meg floppy drive and it reads discs just fine I have no problems with it other than the fact that it just looks kind of dumb the piece of tape on the front here is just because normally it would be covered by a faceplate, and it's not. It's, and it's just a big open gap in the drive, and so the tape is there just to basically keep dust out and to keep it clean. Um, I don't really feel like taking all of this apart, but if you can see under here is there are two RAM sticks on the right there. Um, this big thing on the side here is the power supply which just connects directly to the board using an edge connector there's no cables or anything that connect the power supply to the board there are some other socketed chips on the board which I think are just like ROM chips that hold in the BIOS and that's about it there's nothing terribly super special about this machine and I think I'm not the only one who dislikes these Machines. I don't know how well these machines were really loved by people who had them or people who bought them, but I bought it because it was just a neat thing that I wanted, and I don't know, some guy at Best Buy had this, so like, why not just buy it from them? Whatever. It does work. The only downside is it doesn't have a hard drive. But as long as I can boot off of a floppy disk, then I can get into DOS and do stuff on it. So, let's try that. First, I'll show you guys what's on the reference disk here this is the BIOS setup program for this just like the compact there's no BIOS setup in the system you have to use a separate disk separate program to run so I'm gonna hook this up and boot this up alright 
I have the system hooked up and I have a keyboard and a mouse. What I find interesting is that the PS2 connector for keyboard and mice is the same as you would see on modern machines, so you can use any modern PS2 stuff. So this keyboard is a gateway PS2 keyboard. It's even got like media keys and stuff on it. Those don't really do anything on this system, but it's PS2, so it works. And the mouse is actually a Sony Vio mouse. I mean, it's the wrong brand, but it's PS2, so it works. So anyway, let's put in the reference disc into the floppy drive, flip the switch, and see what happens. Yes, luckily this machine does output correctly and does work correctly with my VGA capture card. So we have a whole one megabyte of RAM. And you can hear it booting from the floppy disk. Booting into... Ta-da! The reference disk. Enter. So from here, if we go to set configuration, you can hopefully see what's in this what's in this machine. Takes a while to uh, to boot there. There it goes. So, yep, that's the problem we get with the floppy disk. It just doesn't know. I mean, with the hard disk, it just doesn't know what it is. So interestingly, um, for the network card, I had to go download what's called an ADF file and put it onto this reference disk, and that's how this knows what it is. So see, we have a meg of RAM, we have our floppy drive, our 287 is installed, we have serial parallel, okay, here we go. So here is the Ethernet adapter. In order to get this to appear here, we had to load up, like I said, an ADF file to tell it what it is and then so here it says type of drive 30 on the hard drive we said we saw that it says type 30 so that is correct the problem is that the hard drive itself has some issues so that the system just can't read it so if we back out of this from this screen there's actually something special that you can do you might see here there's only seven options one thing we can do is if I hit control A we get to a special advanced menu, which I did not know. I don't remember where I discovered this. And here we can format the fixed disk, which should actually do a low-level format of the disk, with something I've seen that will usually fix problems and should make the drive work, but it doesn't. So we're going to go through this, and you're going to see what happens. Yes, I want to continue. No, I don't want to stop. Yes, I want to continue. And here's one error we get, but that's alright, because the next thing is it's going to prepare the disk, which should be to low-level format it. So that's what we want to do, but we get an error. It's factory preparation, yes. Here we go. Alright, so now it's the level formatting the disk, but as you can see, every time it tries to do something, it just... Defective sector. More defective sectors. And there's just so many defective sectors on this disk that, I don't know, every hard drive I've tried gives the same errors. I think they have different numbers of defective sectors, but it still just doesn't work. I have, like, I think two or three of these drives, and I have two drive controllers. And every combination of hard drive and drive controller, nothing leads to something that works. So, just like the laptop, I can boot up floppy disk can't put up the hard drive. But I think with the laptop, the hard drive does work. I just need to tell the BIOS what it is, and I don't know what it is until I open it and also fix the CMOS battery. I don't remember what type of CMOS battery this thing has, but the CMOS battery in this does actually seem to be working. This machine does actually save BIOS settings. It's just that the hard drive doesn't work, not that it can't save the fact that it has a hard drive in the first place. So here's what happened once it tries to low-level front the disk. It just 
the number of bed sectors has been exceeded. There's like over 40 something. Um, so one thing I was saying before about the CMOS battery, when I got this machine, it had a dead CMOS battery, but at least it's replaceable. So I was able to go online and find a replacement CMOS battery. It's next to the floppy drive, right above the PC speaker. So luckily I was able to replace that. So I'm just gonna quit this because, well, I'm gonna quit this because, well, you know, I can't really do much with with a dead hard drive. So we're just gonna boot into DOS because I can at least boot DOS off of a floppy disk and show you some more stuff that the machine can do. We're gonna let it boot up again. Actually, one other interesting thing about this machine is, I forget how to do it, I think if you push like F1 or F2 when it boots up, it actually will boot into one of the ROM chips and actually has BASIC. So this, this machine can actually boot into BASIC. I just don't know how to use BASIC and booting into DOS is a bit more interesting. So yeah, you can see the CS battery works and this machine apparently is Y2K compliant because it knows what date it is and it knows what time it is. So, I'm going to load up a disk here called QA Plus, which is a little program to show us what capabilities this machine has. I think it's QA Pro, actually. Yeah, that's right, it's QA Pro Plus. So yeah, another, another cool thing about this machine over the laptop is, this is in color. Though supposedly the laptop's VGA port is also in color, but it didn't do anything. This one is in color. And does work. QA Plus Pro. Oh, that's a little, little cut off there. Anyway, this machine, this program should tell us more about the hardware that's in this machine. Even though we know already what's in here, I just want to see what this, what this can show us. So this program took a while to load, but eventually did load, and now we can see it analyzing what's in our system. So, there we go, analyzing hard disks, which again we know doesn't work, and other things flashing up on there as it scans through all the hardware in our system. I don't know why it's getting, or it looks like it's getting cut off here on the, on the capture card. I don't want to play with the settings or anything, because it seemed to have working correctly before, so I'm just going to leave it this way. Should hopefully still be able to use it, or at least see what we need, even though a little bit in the side is, is cut off. Well, it finally loaded. It took way longer than I thought it would, but it did eventually load, so... Let's go to system info here, and let's go to hardware config, and see what it tells us about what's in our PS2 here. I'm curious if it can tell us the CPU speed, because I think the dash 10 written on the chip means it's 10 megahertz, but I just want to see what this says that it is. Scanning. I figured everybody did this when it was booting, but I guess not. There we go. Press type MCA, like I said, that's micro channel architecture. It knows it's a PS2 model 50. Um, primary video VGA. Doesn't seem to be telling us the speed of the CPU, but oh well. I just wanted to see what this would, would tell us. Yes, unfortunately, there are still no hard drives. That is the part that doesn't work. So let's quit out of this and load up something more interesting, like Planet X3, to see how well it runs on this machine. Um, so in my other video, when I loaded Planet X3 on the compact, when I quit, it gave a bunch of those random squares on the screen. That seems to be some, something to do with PC DOS 3. When I tried booting DOS 6.2 to on there, which did actually work, quitting Planet X3 did not give that error and it went back to DOS correctly, so 
kind of a weird, weird little glitch with, I guess, just an old version of of DOS. So we're gonna try that in here too. I'm gonna see if I can boot DOS 6.22 on here, load up Planet X3, and see how well it runs. Well, once this quits, I thought I hit quit. Did I? I hit quit. Um, what are we doing? Well, control delete. Why not? Pop out that disk, throw in our DOS 622 disk, and let it boot. I think it's booting. I heard it make noise. Hit Control Delete. Should be hopefully doing doing something. Okay, good. Starting MS DOS. And as you can see, this isn't cut off, so I don't know why QA QA Plus was was cut off because this one is not cut off. So this is actually the DOS install disk, but luckily you just hit quit, and then it goes to a DOS prompt, so it doesn't really matter. So this might just yell at me because I don't have a hard drive, but again, it doesn't matter. I think it would just quit and then quit, quit, and get to a DOS prompt. So let's take this disk out, pop in Planet X3, there's no sound card in this, just the PC speaker, so we're going to pick that, and then, ooh, here we go, that's VTE mode alright, it looks nice and pretty in color, and hopefully our CPU in here should be fast enough to run this game, and yeah, it runs just fine. I need to learn how to play this game, I'm not very good at these type of, of games, but it works, and makes PC speaker sound just fine. So, I think that's all I have to say about the IBM PS2 here. This is my I guess, second 286 machine, and I wish I can get the hard drive working, if anyone knows maybe why this drive isn't working or why I'm getting errors, because like when I try to format it, I get like track zero bad if I just go into like um, FDisk or just format C and try to format it, because FDisk can see the drive and I can partition it, but when I try to format it, that's when I get an error, and when I try to do low level format, it gives a bunch of errors, so I don't actually know exactly what's going on with the hard drive. I think my solution is probably the best solution is to just get the SCSI adapter and do like a SCSI to SD or some sort of external SCSI hard drive, but for now, it boots off of floppy disks. That's good enough for me, so I'm not going to worry about it, really. So, thank you guys for checking out this video.